Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to Thursday Talks, I think episode 31. So as always, I will open by saying if you do have any questions, please plop them down below. Plop, <laughs> plop them down below, oh god. Um, please put them down below, that just sounds wrong, plop. Anyway, um, so see the laughs are already coming. Anyway, so um, we have some great questions today um, and I think I'll just go ahead straight into it. Um, so, Peter asks, what's your biggest oh bugger moment? And what he means by that is basically his example he used was he put his thumb through the back of a 1972 Cluedo board game uh, and obviously whipped the, whipped the back of it or something like that, or pierced the back of it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know whether it's that I'm a careful person because I don't really feel like much of a careful person, but um, I've just not really broken anything i mean i've dropped things loads of times don't get me wrong i have dropped loads of things books board games even the odd mug but for some reason or another i've not really had any breakages um oh actually no i tell a lie there was one breakage the other week uh i don't know whether i've got it round here well i've got a, oh actually is it that one oh i don't know um I'll just get this in a, the, as an example. I, I, it wasn't this one I broke, because this one's fine, this case. But um, I dropped a Tony Hawk skating PS1 game. Um, and it, the case, to be honest, was, like, shot anyway, really. Um, and I dropped it on, the, on a hard floor, and that, like, sort of broke it completely, basically. Um, so, yeah, that's the only one, really, I can think of in a year. Um... My mum did break a couple of mugs uh, about six months ago. Actually, it was when we were moving into here. So, obviously, you can imagine we were moving a lot of stuff from that room to this room. So, you're going to incur the odd thing that might nearly break or might actually break in that case. Um, but there were only those Cadbury ones and I picked them up for like 10p. You know those little Cadbury Easter egg ones you get with Easter eggs? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it wasn't too bad. Um, but that's, yeah, that's all I can say, really. I don't think there's been anything else, surprisingly. Um, David McGregor asks, what's left on my, or on your, because of the way I've wrote it down is weird, um, what's left on your bucket list? Uh, he means, like, reseller bucket list. Um, uh, I don't know, a lot of the vintage board games, Denny's Fisher ones, um, you know the story, same old stuff I always talk about. War of the Daleks, Hero Quest. I've actually never hit, picked up a Hero Quest. Um, yeah, so that's definitely on there. Pac-Man that Ben picked up the other week. I've really want, wanted to get that one. Um, New Avengers board game. Uh, you know you know the drill. The stuff that I showed in that Denny's Fisher video. Anything I showed in that, I want it. Um, secondly, I would like... Uh, Vinny picks these up quite a lot. The Woody and the Jess, is it Jessie, the cowgirl? Um, those toys. I don't know who makes them, I forgot. Um, but I'd really like to pick those up. Um, they're really cool. Um, I, I, I could imagine I would really like to keep one of those for myself if I bought it though. Um, but yeah, they are cool. So I'd like them. Also, a bit of a weird one. Um, but it, I suppose it suits my personality, so it's not that weird. Um, but taxidermy, I would love to pick up some taxidermy. I am currently scouring for, through the auction room, seeing if I can get a cheap piece and flip it for okay money. Because um, even if I could only flip it for maybe like 10, 20 quid net profit, I'd be happy with that because I just want to buy it, you know, to to buy it to sell it. Um, I'm, it sounds a bit weird to buy something just to sell it, but... I'm sure you know what I mean, just because of the pleasure of getting the item. Sometimes your your heart rules your head, and you you'll pay up for something just because you 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 want it. You you may have an emotional connection with the item, or you know it might hold sentimental value or whatever. Um, but yeah, I would love to get some taxidermy just to say I bought and sold it, basically. Um, yeah, other ones, other ones. I, I, to be honest, I, there's probably loads, but I can't think at the moment. It's always when I actually come to do the video that I can't remember, you know, 
the like I've been I always think of the Thursday talk questions. I think about them all weekly leading up to it, and uh, you know every now and then when I get a spare minute, I ever think of, of what how I'll answer them. But this isn't scripted or anything like that, so you know it, it's I forget a lot of the times what my answers are and stuff. But yeah, there's probably loads more, but there, there is absolutely loads I want to pick up really. Um, but that was a good question, really, really good that one. And then Caroline from the Celtic Traders, hi Caroline, um, asks um, two questions actually. What have I uh, had hanging around the longest? It was actually, I don't know what my current thing hanging around the longest is, but um, a board game Alpha Animals. It's uh, like a yellow uh, box with some sort of like pattern around it as well. Um, and it's a weird board game. I didn't really get out how people are meant to play it and stuff. I checked it, but, you know, I didn't really look into how you play it and stuff. Um, and it was on there for, like, 8 No, no I think it was, like, 10 99 or something, or 11 99 because I paid, like, 2 or 3 quid for it, so it must have been... Although it might have been when I was selling things really cheap, so it might have been, like, 8 99 um, And it sat there for ages, and then Christmas came about, and I thought, oh, yeah, that, that should go at Christmas. Um, you know, it was my first Christmas, and I was thinking, oh, everyone says everything, you know, loads of things go, so it'll go, but it didn't, um, which was unfortunate, and then it sat around to, I think it was February it went, but I had it since I started, so it was seven or eight months, and, um, I ended up selling it for six ninety nine with free shipping, and I bought it for, as I say, two or three quid, so I probably made a loss, or... Um, maybe a very, very, very small profit. Um, but that has to be the one that hung, hung around the longest. It just wouldn't go. I actually got questions on it as well. And people still didn't buy it. And it was frustrating me. Um, but then it finally did go. So, I mean, that was actually... When I actually sold that product, that board game, was the moment I... Everyone kept saying, um, everything sells in the end. And when, I didn't believe that, but when that board game went after eight months, after reducing the price, after having questions, after having watchers, all that sort of stuff, I knew that yes, everything does sell in the end. Um, so it was a real, like, it was an eye-opener that was. Um, but yeah, that was a good question. And she also asks, um, where do I see myself as a seller in five years? Well, there's one fantasy I would love to to become reality and a few of the other resellers uh, i think maybe a few of the guys on youtube or some of the guys who aren't even on youtube i've talked to about this um and that is being part of a reseller power couple i would love to have a girlfriend or a wife or whatever um who is a reseller with me and we motivate each other we do our i, I mean i mean i'd like it so that then we sat separate you know, I do like... What I would love is, uh, in sort of five years' time, is I would do all antiques or, like, 80% antiques um, and a few, like, quick sellers. And then my wife, my girlfriend can do whatever she would like. Um, we'd probably have two different stores, eBay stores. Um, although, same, that might, it might be quite hard because she might... I might have been the one to convince her to be a reseller, so then we'd have to build up the feedback on, on another account. Um, but I don't know, we might have one store, we might have two, I, I just don't know. Or actually, can you, you can have two, I don't know, can you, someone will be able to answer this. Can you have two shops on one eBay account? I didn't think you could, so I was thinking you'd have to build up the feedback on another eBay account and then get a shop. But anyway, um, so... Yeah, I'd love to do that. I do my antiques. I have about five years' time, 1,500, 2,000 items. And because I'm doing, because I'll be doing more antiques then, hopefully, uh, regardless of whether I have a girlfriend or not and we're part of a couple, uh, like a resale power couple, I do want to do antiques more. Um, the thing about doing antiques is it's a lower sell through rate, so I need more space because I need a bigger inventory. Um, and the way to get around that is we, my mum and me have already decided, well, we're not deciding on this, but we're thinking about it. And that's uh, knocking down the old shed at the back. It's really rickety. 
and getting a new big one, nice big one. Um, and then also keeping a lot of the stuff in this room. So then I've actually got a full shed and quite a big shed, hopefully, and pretty much a full room up here for stock as well. And that will be enough to, to get that level of inventory, you see. Um, definitely 1,000, if not 1,500. Um, you know, especially if I'm focused on smaller items, like, for example, in here, I've got a load of tins, vintage tins. Um, I am going to do a haul video on that, so I'm not going to show you any more. Um, but yeah, um, especially when I'm doing small items like that and other bits and bobs that are small, you know, it's not going to take tons of room up. Um, but yeah, so the shed is an option, um, and then obviously I have in this room as well. Um, as I say, the, the reseller power couple, if, if that happens, then we might have already moved out by five years' time. I don't know, you know, I might have moved out of here, um, and we might have a full house you know a full house so by then i might be kicking it into overdrive and i might have two thousand items on or more um especially if i've got the freedom of having a full house and my wife or partner is a reseller too because then she wouldn't be bothered about the house being taken up by clutter um but yeah i mean i, I don't know to be if i'm completely honest these are all theories you know these are all things that i'm thinking of but they're not put in place yet. I do like to have long-term goals, but the short-term goals to me are more important at the moment. Um, and then, obviously, I will build up the long-term goals as I go, basically. Um, but in terms of items, I, as I say, 1,000, 1,500 items. Um, I know I'm rambling a bit now, so I'll try and cut this short, but there's a couple of things else I wanted to talk about about, about that question as well. Um, maybe not, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but, um, yeah, it's just, it's just so hard to try and think about five years time and what I'm going to be doing and where I'm going to be doing it, because I, I just, so much can happen in five years, I mean, it's crazy, if I say to you now, I'm going to have this, I'm going to have that, something completely different could happen, I don't know, I might, you know, completely abandon reselling. I might, um, you know, randomly, I might move to another country and maybe do start reselling there or something, or, you know, get a new job there, or maybe go into full-time employment. Obviously, that means reselling has to take a back seat or maybe even abandon it. And there's just so much that can happen. Or, on the opposite side of the scales, in five years, I could be you know really excelling at it that i can buy up buy like a, a a massive storage locker or something i mean that is a possibility you know it's it's not going to cost tons and tons of money to buy a, a you know a fair fairly sizable storage lock up or whatever and in five years that could be a reality and therefore i could actually you know go down to the storage lock up work there have loads and loads of stock there fill it up to my heart's content and then I can come back after the day's done, work 9 till 5 or 10 till 6 or whatever, you know, whatever hours I want really provided they're in the hours of where when I can go to that place and if it's open and all that But um, and then come back here uh, when the day's done because I, I know that my mum and dad would love that because there's no stock in the house then so there's so much potential I cannot say one way or the other something is going to happen. It happens like it happens. The the greatest quote I have ever... I, I, I mean, I've just... I, I've read a lot of quotes, and this one is really good. The best laid plans of mice and men. John Steinbeck. That's the best quote ever. You can plan and plan and plan, but most of the time, something is going to go slightly differently, if not entirely differently, to your plan. Um... I don't know whether that's a full quote. I'm, I'm thinking it was meant to be something before that. Best laid plan. I'm thinking there was something before that, but I don't know. Someone can tell me down in the comments. Um, but yeah, so that's that one done. Thursday Talks episode 31. Crazy. Uh, I'm going to be on 50 soon, which is just remarkable. Um, anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed that. Sorry about the rambling, 
But it was a subject, that, that last question is a subject I've been thinking about. I'm always thinking about it, the future of my business. So, you know, I do tend to ramble when I'm on that subject. Um, but yeah, so anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed it and I will leave it there. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now. Thank you.